This is the Neo Book Call for Monday, September 11th, 2023. We are looking at the draft that Klaus uh, has been working on and uh, making suggestions. And I'd forgotten to turn on the recording until now. So, um, so I think uh, in, in that spot, uh, there we go. So I think in, in that spot, something that, that basically says, hey, um, our goal is to, to move the needle on, on these re regenerative agriculture and, the, and soil, uh, but lots of people have very different attitudes and approaches to it. Um, a, a, a very useful framework is spiral dynamics, so we're going to employ it thus. And then you're yeah. off and, and then you're off and running. Yeah, thank you, Jerry. I was being lazy in my in my words, um, <laughs> and you you used the exact right words. So well, I, well said. Mm -hmm. I will I will suggest some text right here, and then uh, Klaus, you can change it to whatever whatever makes sense for you. But I'll I'll paraphrase what I just said right here. Okay. Hmm. Uh, talk amongst yourselves for a moment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. When are you when are you leaving, Klaus? Uh, Monday next week. Beautiful. And the first part of your trip is to South America. Yeah, we're going. We're landing in Santiago, Chile, um, where the, where the tour starts. We're flying in, you know, a day early, and then it you know, goes around Patagonia, and uh, uh, we end up uh, in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Beautiful. Have you have you um, have you been to e either of those places? No, no, it's just our bucket list. So, suggestion, two suggestions. Okay, one: do not bother with Pablo Neruda's house in Santiago. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> do not bother. It's just uh, you know, it's just like this little house, and to get there, you've got to walk up these big hills, and we went these not big hills but you know a, a, a street up a hill and when we went there it was just full of dog shit i mean it was just it was just, that's my that's my remembrance of the great pablo neruda's house what is lots of fun though okay is um they have these uh buses that that run along the coast uh up north uh uh, Valparaiso, I think is, oh no, wait a minute. Valparaiso is where Pablo Neruda's house is. It's on the coast. It's a, you know, it's a, it's it's an hour's train ride away. I think that's where Pablo Neruda's house. If you happen to go there um, to Valparaiso, they have these buses that kind of race up and down the coast um, wow. with rock music playing. And it's kind of, it's, <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of a, it's kind of a fun experience. Okay. Yeah. And the Buenos Aires, you know, what a lot of people do is um, take a um, uh, a boat ride from Buenos Aires on the river. Um, I think it's the Amazon. Yeah. And and they often go it's, to it's, it's the River Plate, uh, Rio de la Plata, uh, uh, ends in in BA. The Amazon is elsewhere. I stand corrected. People often take like a three and a half hour boat ride to, um, I think it's the, um, God, the capital of Uruguay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, can, you can basically go, go across the Mar del Plata to Montevideo or Punta del Este is like the, the kind of touristy resorty kind of place. Punta del Este is the name of it uh, over in Uruguay. Yeah, but there's a shorter little tour you could take. Um, this, this is the... Uh... Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Bariloche, cool. Oh, beautiful. There's a there's a shorter tour that you can take from Buenos Aires boat tour to a um it's kind of a colonial village and I'm 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 blanking on the name right now. Colonia, okay? Colonial village, Colonia, right? And um in it there is a wonderful restaurant called Restaurant Florida. Okay? Um, how I got there is when we got off the ferry, there was this, you know, 40s jazz playing, and we were just attracted to to go to the to to follow the jazz. And we had this three-hour lunch and found out how really good um the red wine is from Uruguay. 
Yeah. <laughs> but the well, rest, we, yeah. the rest is called Restaurant Florida because it was opened by a um, a chef from Miami who decided to abandon Miami and move to a very very small place. Grows all of his own um, food on an organic farm. So just just two thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two. Well, we were sort of in that in that agenda because so much work, you know. Too when you travel on your own. And uh, uh, and then you need more than two weeks, really, I mean, if you're ready to do that. But so uh, we just go with Ward Scholar. We just love the way they organize their trips. Okay. okay. Um, well, so I'm sure if you're going to Buenos Aires, they'll take you on a tour to um, Teatro Colonia, which is the big concert hall opera house, which is a really interesting um, tour uh, because they kept running out of money and they kept hiring different architects. So it's a combination of Italian, yeah. French, um, German uh, architecture in this one beautiful um, uh, concert hall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I, I can't wait. It'll be, it'll be fun. <laughs> I love that. That itinerary looks awesome. A couple more yeah. tips on BA, because I, I lived in BA for two years when I was 10 and 10 to 12. <clears throat> um, and then I went back a couple times. Uh, but the like the the cool part of town seems to now be Palermo, and Palermo has enough sub, sort of subdivisions in it that there's Palermo Norte, Palermo Hollywood is a piece of it, and I had some really nice meals, very different meals in Palermo because the prototypical Argentine meal is a beautiful steak and a, and, a, and the same the same freaking salad in every place you go to. It's it's astonishing. And then there's a series of sort of neighborhoods that come from uh, downtown. There's a train station called Retiro. You take a commuter train out to Tigre is the last stop. And Tigre is in the middle of the delta of the, the Mar del Plata. And there's a bunch of little boat tours and other kinds of things. I never figured out what the magic of Tigre was. They, they you know, you, you do boat rides between the little islands in the delta. There are lots of restaurants there as well. But if you see something good there, let me know. Uh, you will uh, on that commuter rail. You will pass a neighborhood called La Lucila. It's one of the stops. That was where my grade school was, and I lived a little further out in a neighborhood called San Isidro. Yep, uh, and I went to the Lincoln School in La Lucila. Funny enough, and uh, and then the teatro, the theater that Stuart was talking about is called the Teatro Colon, which is quite famous. Uh, yeah. And then uh, make sure uh, it looks like you already have one. But if you're just going to watch watch tango performances, that's kind of interesting. Uh, if you uh, otherwise go to a milonga, a milonga is where ordinary citizens go to dance tango with other people. And it's more interesting, more local, more beautiful. It's not a couple of people doing like ferocious twisting and turning, you know, in front of you to perform tango. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's pretty constrained in the sense that this is nonstop. Uh, yeah. The, uh, the itinerary is like boom, boom, boom. Boom, yeah. boom. Yeah. Mm hmm so cool. you, you won't miss anything. You won't miss any high points. Mm -hmm. So back to our program, which was already in progress. Yeah. So then, so then, so we got we got this abstract. So we'll play with this a little more. Um, and then, then you wanted me to to uh, talk more specifically. Why am I using ChatGPT and how and and also spiral dynamics here? So, so here's what I wrote for the introduction. You now I've now divided, you know, worked with ChatGPT, um, starting with 3.5, upgraded to 4.0 midway through, uh, and that really made a significant change. I framed the relationship with Chat with Chat as conversational. In fact, when I first started, the responses came back as okay, conversation partner, <laughs> uh, right. which is. Um, using spiral dynamics as a frame of customizing conversations to and with specific audiences. And then I'm putting in here this spiral dynamics paper from Beck and Cohen, which are also inserted into the chat GPT um, introduction, right? Or personalization. Um, they're intuitive, understand, intuitively understandable, readily observable all around us. And then from a marketing communications point of view, they offer simple to convey markers that guide language and concepts. Yeah. So when you when you put yourself into how do I talk you know, to this particular group, this sort of helps you know, to to choose metaphors and language. Um, 
So the interactions are conversational, advancing, you know, and I actually have, I've had one interaction where ChatGPT is saying, I'm going to give you two, two answers. Please pick the one that uh, you find more aligned with, with your uh, intent. So it simultaneously, very arrogant, simultaneously ran two responses hmm. to my question. And then I picked one, but it would also advance, you know, in a sense that uh, it would give me a response. And then I would say, well, you missed you know, that we could be doing this. And then it comes back saying, uh, that's absolutely right. My apologies. I overlooked that. You know, so so the the interaction with chat GPT is really amazing. Uh, it's really like you're talking with someone. Um, and then uh, coming up with more complex responses. Um, it's now asking me questions, frames responses starting with considering moral boundaries. So it comes back with considering that you want to use Tolstoy, you know, as a guidepost for the uh, moral uh, uh, dimension of this issue. Um, care for environment, you know, offers multiple choice responses to questions to narrow down the conversation. It's remarkable and has become astoundingly routine. Yeah. It causes me to change the question, edit multiple responses. I also wanted to have an alignment around moral boundaries and ask to use Tolstoy and in particular his letter to a Hindu as reference to how I see the world. Now, Tolstoy has in my mind crystallized the essence of the human animal. This is who we are. This is how it works. No sense pretending it's not. This That has been tried and failed repeatedly. So what works? Not to forget the how does it work? You know, these are all great questions to explore. So, you know, just just uh, referencing how I have um, customized or, or laid in some algorithms into ChatGPT to frame to frame the conversation. I I like this a lot, and I'm thinking that your abstract and introduction don't need to be separate. You might want to combine them, <clears throat> and then. Uh, kind of layer in the layer in three things. Well, thing number one is, hey, here's the here's the situation in the world that's causing me to write this book. I'm trying to figure out how to get healthy soil again, and you've got some of that. Then, um, in order to in order to address people of different groups, we are you, we are adopting this framework called spiral dynamics. And then you talk about spiral dynamics, and then you say, "Oh, and by the way, I am co-authoring this uh, with ChatGPT, which is like hit the world like a thunderstorm in at the end of 2022." Um, and here is how and why I primed it, and what the conversation was like. And you might also, I'm starting to think that because you have a lot of text that's basically straight out of ChatGPT that's in the that's in the draft. Um, Oh, that this is. I just had a funny idea. <clears throat> um, it, it it may or may not be interesting or necessary to distinguish your edits from the original ChatGPT. I mean, imagine where the manuscript where we could tell where your edits were and what was raw. I don't think we need to do that. But the idea came into my head as you were talking because I'm realizing that so much of the text um, uh, is is straight out of ChatGPT. And then the funny idea I just had, which I Think you're both going to like is in the acknowledgments at the top where where you you know where you say like what this book is book title <clears throat> um, and then you, you can basically say by chat gpt as told to klaus mager which is what happens with a lot of bi uh, sort of uh, memoirs and things like that where the where where the person isn't really that good at writing themselves so they tell it to somebody or they're a, a famous person or they went through something so so basically instead of listing chat gpt as a co-author or um, and what you did was uh, generated on chat gpt prompted and edited by klaus mager which is good um but but what i'm suggesting is uh, I'll, I'll just write it below um Something like that. Uh, I'm just suggesting it as an alternative. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, so that, doesn't, that doesn't 
um, it doesn't that excite either of you. That ChatGPT has more autonomy and and uh, direction than is the case because it it responds to very specific prompts and and uh, and and questions and it has been very iterative and interactive to get to the outcome here. A uh, good point, Stuart. Did you want to voice your objection too? Yeah. Well, I no. I had two. I had two things that I just wanted to say. Um, one. Um, you might, um, because it's just so early on in this, you might have a, a sentence or two about um, the utility of chat GPT as a writer, as an author. Um, you know, uh, could be could be as a, you know, as, a, as just a little bit of an aside. <clears throat> That's one piece. Two, I'm going to push back on Jerry's thought that combining the abstract and the introduction, I think they're two two different things, serve two different purposes. Some people will only read the abstract, and you want to have that be a kind of a standalone um, document that summarizes what the content is, because uh, a lot of people are not going to dig in to you know 50 pages or whatever number of pages it is. What you've got. <clears throat> Uh, so what you've got right now as introduction is actually how this book was written. It's really not an introduction to the book. It's a it's a it's a subsection about how the book was written, which is, hey, we started. We, I, yeah, I used ChatGPT to do this. In, where it starts with introduction is is like an introduction to the book would be about soil, right? So that that's why I'm saying if you combine these things, then you can flow that flow it all together and it'll make sense because I think that the writing with ChatGPT is as interesting as the use of spiral dynamics is as interesting as the overall actual topic of the book, which is regenerating our soil. So if you want to separate the abstract and the introduction, then the introduction isn't working as an introduction right now. It, it like, like it's not really an introduction to the topic of the book. Does that make sense? What we're looking on the screen right now? Pardon? You can title it maybe something different, but I do like the idea of having this separated. You uh, could say how, how this book was written or... Uh, no, I mean, as the or? abstract really is this. This is you know, the topic here you know, from soil to civilization and um, how uh, this paper aims to communicate this urgency, suggest actionable strategies. You know, and then here's how here is how it was written, or this is how I went ab ab about it technically to write it. Uh, this is, by the way, no chat GPT. I wrote this myself, which is what got me started thinking about how maybe the marking, you know, uh, <clears throat> somehow marking and making visible what you wrote and what chat GPT wrote, but we don't need to do that. How about the following suggestion? Take the subheading of introduction and put it where you now have agenda abstract. Because I don't know, I don't know that a book like this needs an abstract. I think an abstract is outside the book uh, and, and different. I think the book needs an intro. And the thing that you have right now labeled as abstract is in fact what I would think of as an introduction. Then you can take this subhead where it says introduction and call it how you know uh, enter chat GPT or how this book was written or this book is a synthesis or something else that nicely encapsulates what this last piece is, which is, hey, I, I wrote this using ChatGPT. And I agree with what Stuart said about uh, some reflections on your, um, the use of ChatGPT as a writer. Yeah. And I, I, I agree with Jerry's suggestions about um, um, the, the abstract and the introduction. Mm -hmm. So you would call this you would call this introduction here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then and then this year. Um, and then this I don't know what you what title you want, but you know uh, how 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 I wrote this. Uh, uh, enter Chat GPT. Uh, methodology. The methodology. The the process. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. And, and so the, the moral boundaries, the letter to the Hindu thing. Um, so the last paragraph of this section might want to go up with the abs 
Well, maybe not. Gosh. Um, Because part of what you're, the reason you're adding letter to the Hindu here is that that's part of how you prompted, how you trained ChatGPT to respond to you appropriately, right? Yeah, I know. I mean, Chat constantly refers to Tolstoy. Right. I mean, <laughs> I, and, and what you don't see is I've taken these references out of the out, out of the responses because mm. I'm, I'm editing the the, mm. the, uh, the text coming back. So gotcha. I, I want it to be in there because it shapes the response by Chat GPT, you know, to to a specific question. I mean, it says considering you know, what Tolstoy would think here, or considering what uh, Spiral Dynamics is saying. So it 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 fashions responses to it. Mm -hmm. And there are several times where I said rewrite this, taking out uh, uh, the references to Tolstoy and Spiral Dynamics. But it's completely embedded, you know, in in the overall uh, uh, book here, really. Yeah. So so uh, and and I mean, I I was uh, watching a video by some sixteen year old kid uh, giving, and I actually posted it on the on the uh, on the thread um, or in our on our email change, um, saying twenty three tips on how to work with chat GPT, you know? And so he uh, wrote a letter to his uh, boss excusing himself from work. And it was just a horrible way to, to write it. And he goes, I probably end up getting fired if I submit this. So I asked chat to rewrite it. And then, and then so chat GPT rewrote it. So that's how, but, but uh, he's telling chat GPT write this from um a teacher's perspective or from from uh, a, a pirate's perspective so so they they are telling chat gpt pretend you're a pirate how would you frame this mm -hmm. so the 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 young folks are using chat gpt in ways that are like holy smokes it's just another tool another toy to play with yeah um so that's that was uh, that was really amazing you know to see um so so I'm right I'm asking ChatGPT to write in the voice of you know a told story or a spiral dynamics framework. So then the the other thing that uh we were talking about so so here I was, I was coming to the end mm -hmm. visions for the future and I redid this I took a whole bunch of stuff out and rewrote some of it. Um but visions for the future here is you now it's basically the current trajectory of human impact on the environment is creating a ripple effect of consequences affecting both the biosphere and social systems. If not mitigated within the next five to 10 years, these impacts could lead to irreversible damage and create an array of challenges for human civilization. And then Chad is saying, my confidence in these statements is high. It's interesting that because I also asked it to to put a confidence factor on its statements. So in the beginning, chat would say, I have an 80% confidence level, I have a 90% confidence level. And now it's changing it to saying my confidence is high. So it doesn't put a percentage factor on it anymore, which is sort of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, but given the overwhelming scientific evidence supporting these trends, the urgency of for change has never been more critical. So then I thought, so where do we go from here? So we have visions of the future and it's pretty grim. Um, so where do we go? And then this is the theory you uh, slogan leading from the emerging future, right? So when you go to the curve, you come down to uh, presencing, and then you can move to crystallization, right? Meaning you have a clear understanding. You now, what is our current situation? You know, what are we dealing with? And what would be in, in the form of crystallization, you define what are desirable outcomes, right? So you go to the other for the other side of the of the U curve. On that other side are uh, desirable outcomes this is where we want to be but then in but then you move from crystallization to prototyping prototyping means that 
you create a uh, a project frame that is maybe 60% defined, you know, 60, 65%. So you don't wait to do something perfect because you can't, you don't have enough information for that. So you design something at, at 60%. And then you start prototyping, and then you do the, and then you continue designing, you know, as the prototype moves along. And so that's leading from the emerging future, you know, as the future, which is now sort of nebulous and poorly defined, we sort of know, but we don't really know how to get there. So as that picture emerges out of the shadows and you have a clearer understanding. What are all the influence factors you need to consider? Then you con then you continue, you know, this design process. Um, so the what, go ahead. Uh, what you're doing here is from theory U. Yeah. Um, I don't see that you're pointing to theory U, and if you're calling it the same thing, you should probably include theory U, just like you included um, spiral dynamics as an influence uh, in your in your uh, uh, introduction. You might want to say. Uh, there were there are several influences here. One of them is theory U for how to structure the inquiry, and another is spiral dynamics for how to address the audiences. And then it's all clear and and whatever. Otherwise, if I see leading from the emerging future and you don't mention theory U, it sounds a little bit like plagiarism, or you're just sort of like like not you know not not saying what you're what you're uh, referring to here. And it's a, I think it's a lovely thing to talk about uh, to bring in theory U and to say why it's a useful framework here. Yeah. Um, um, and, it, and and I think in the intro it'll make a lot of sense. It'll be like, oh, I, you know, in order to in order to structure the inquiry, I'm using theory U. In order to talk to people, I'm using spiral dynamics. Yeah, actually, I have uh, uh, when I was still working with the presencing uh, group, uh, my my uh, gig was we need to combine theory U with spiral dynamics in order to create a communication that that uh, really addresses the, the spectrum of uh, of uh, the, uh, the people we're dealing with um so so that has been uh, in my in my mind for for quite yeah. a while um so so but but you know leadership you now uh, is is not what a person or an individual does uh, the essence of leadership is the capacity of the system in which everyone is participating to sense and shape the future and to be in touch with what is waiting, wanting to emerge and then stepping into that. Uh, so it, it is it is really a collective sensing uh, effort, you know, then where, where everyone, no matter where on the spectrum you are, uh, uh, it's like a hologram, you know, you can step into it wherever uh, you are called to, you know, because it has so many facets. Um, so then, then this is now again a reference to spiral dynamics without saying it. You know, the practicality of using an evolved understanding of human values for social change. Um, you know, our traditional ways of communicating for social change often fall short. They either oversimplify or they create polarized groups making collective action difficult and evolved understanding of human values inspired by developmental psychology and systems theory can significantly enhance the efficacy of our messages and strategies. So why an evolved understanding of values is needed? You know, there is audience complexity, a singular message rarely resonates with everyone. Then there's dynamic change, societies and individuals are not static they are complex and systems that evolve over time. So a communication strategy should take this dynamism into account. You know? um, so Klaus, is this section you're reading to us um, created by ChatGPT? Um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I've had multiple iterations on this. Great, great. I, I, that's great. Um, yeah, it, I didn't take this out of theory. You, you know, I. Mm -hmm. I uh, uh, um and so so this yeah this actually came uh this is new material i mean it came out of this uh now i had to have it i had to i had it rewrite it several times to get to this to this uh, stage here uh, which makes it really interesting because uh 
chat will tell me, oh yeah, I like this better too, kind of thing, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, it reads it reads nicely. It's a good summary. Uh, then key principles for effective communication, holistic insight. You know, adopting a systems thinking approach is vital. A message should elucidate how each part of a system interacts with and impacts the whole. Adaptive solutions. You know, life is inherently unpredictable and chaotic. Rigid linear solutions fall short because they can't adapt to new unforeseen challenges. And that's really the essence of theory U also. Without, and I haven't communicated with chat yet about theory U. So I haven't laid that in you know, as, mm -hmm. a, as, a, as a thought model. Mm -hmm. So it came up with this on its own. Um, so, so communication should focus on flexible and adaptive solutions. And the essence of prototyping in theory U is to be flexible and adaptive. You know, to not vet yourself to, this is our design and we have to make this work. It's simply proposing a design and then see where it goes. Then the integrative approach in our polarized world, integration rather than alienation is needed. Acknowledging strengths and contributions of various viewpoints, showing how they can complement each other. Um, con con discussions should uh, consider both individual responsibility and systemic factors. You know, striving for a balanced and nuanced view, transparent intentions, you know, trust basically. Uh, for trust is a cornerstone for any meaningful exchange being transparent about intentions, limitations, potential impacts, mm -hmm. uh, it's vital, and then data-driven and experiential wisdom. Effective communication uses a blend of empirical data and experiential wisdom. You know, while numbers and facts can provide compelling arguments, stories and experiences often appeal to our shared humanity, offering a more rounded and persuasive message. Uh, so the storytelling aspect here. And then how to measure effectiveness. And I thought that was really um, a, a great response here. Efficacy can't be assumed. It must be measured. So key metrics include engagement. Are people actually engaging with the message? You know, what, one thing that I found, um, I've been preaching the desertification of, uh, of huge tracts of land because of chemical farming and how this disrupts the local rain cycle. And for some reason, I just couldn't push through until uh, a colleague of mine is a farmer scientist from the Sierra Club wrote this paper and I actually posted it also on the uh, uh, OGM uh, the thread where it became so obvious, you know, that land, that, that more soil that is moist, um, uh, 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 absorbs heat and cools it, has a cooling effect, you know, because it, it creates this evapotranspiration. So you have you have water going up and down. So anyway, this resonated everywhere. You know, it was it was just uh, so so that that was that is a effective communication. Uh, and I actually posted it with the Climate Reality Project with the director of training. And the guy just went, wow, this is huge. Yeah. So, so from what you're saying right now, Klaus, which is really interesting, um, I think there might be a section you put in, I don't know exactly where, but here's what I've discovered works in conversations. Bef maybe before you go to spiral dynamics, um, because the spiral dynamics is a way of amplifying and customizing the messages and, and, and the, the, the approaches that you want to do for each of the different spiral layers, levels. Um, but what you're saying right now is, you know, I started, in fact, there's a little piece of it that could be like, a, here's my path through, or may, I don't know if this is in the intro or if this is like dead in the middle, but I started by talking about regenerative agriculture and all these kinds of things, and that wasn't sticking very well. Then I shifted to talk about water. Everybody really like picked up on water and water was non-controversial and whatever else. Then I started going a little deeper into water, like uh, this, this, the small water cycle and a couple other things where everybody got enthusiastic about it because they were like, oh, I didn't know that. Like, I, I, I like water. I want to save water. So 
uh, water reclamation or water landscaping is interesting, but all of a sudden when I start realizing that there's dynamics about water that are extra beneficial, that got even more interesting. So some some narrative about your lessons in trying to do this in different contexts and places would be a personal a, a lovely personal reflection and a, series, a set of insights in the middle of this text. So just to, to take that a little bit further, one of the questions that's popping up in my mind is, um, so why are you writing this paper? Okay. What is it that you want to generate as a result of this, this, this book? Hmm? So, well, I, I think that that came out in the uh, um, in the introduction here. But I mean, that's that's uh, our aim is to elucidate the role of soil in the historic rise and fall of civilizations. This paper aims to communicate the urgency, such as actionable strategies in a language accessible to the general public. Um, so by, under, um, by addressing the underlying values and concerns of each, we hope to accelerate a global transition to sustainable agriculture. Great. I just wanted to make sure we had it. <laughs> uh, sure, yeah, I mean, that's important. No, uh, I just wanted to make sure we had it. The, the uh, so, so then, but then here, this is coming to this uh, this conc conclusion again, and and th so this is spiral dynamics without saying spiral dynamics in this particular uh, part here. Why an evolved understanding of values is needed, key principles for effective communication, then how to measure effectiveness. Yeah. Um, so so I can give this example about you know, soil. I mean, dealing with water. To get to soil and and, and how, how people resonate with that. So in conclusion, traditional methods of communicating for social change are often not sufficient for the complex, polarized, and ever-changing world we live in. What's needed is a more evolved understanding of human values that takes into account the complexity and diversity of our society. Um, that allows us to create messages that resonate with a broader range. Um, and encourages the adaptability and integration that are crucial for tackling you know, challenges we face. It's not merely a theoretical concept. It's a practical results-oriented strategy that has far-reaching implications for how we go about enacting meaningful social change. So that's how far that's, that's how far I got with it. Wait, and, and that's the where are we now in the document? To the very end? Yeah, how to measure effective uh, oh, okay. how to measure effectiveness. Um, so that's interesting. I didn't realize we were at the very end of the document right now, because this feels like good summary material kind of up in the middle somewhere. Um, and also, because you're drawing explicitly on spiral dynamics, and, and it feels to me, and I think this is what motivated you originally, that theory U tends to be a very good setup for spiral dynamics. Theory U, the conclusions of using theory U are like, hey, you're going to need to have a, a complex emergent way of addressing audiences that have very different feelings about this. Um, I don't know why you're saying this is sort of spiral dynamics without saying spiral dynamics. You should make the links more explicit, but that's maybe because you have the God's view of the whole document and ChatGPT has only a chunk at a time kind of view. But but there's no reason to not say, hey, uh, what, what, why an evolved understanding of values is needed, values and complexity, uh, that's why we use spiral dynamics. See that, you know, go to that section, see it, see it here. But if you make the linkages in your logic more explicit, um, I think the book then flows as a book. And so this leading from the emergent future, I, I don't know if this needs to be at the tail end of the of the book, maybe it's somewhere else and closer to the middle, maybe before you get to spiral dynamics. Yeah, I'm not sure if you go back into the flow here. So we have food revolt, you know, why uh, we need to revolt here um, and uh, how, how uh, precarious the current system really is, 
um, we must consider local conditions. I mean, this is really leading up to an introductory understanding of what is happening, you know, in the in the natural world. Yep. And then it talks about bioregions. You know, oh, bioregions like are really an important part. And then how bioregions link in with culture and traditions. You know, so I'm going across here, what I mean, you think of Europe, for example, the European culture, traditions deeply rooted in the history of each bioregion. Um, and then comes the impact of industrial agriculture, which ignores bioregions and, and wants to establish a centralized, monoculture type of farming where they want to grow the same potato everywhere. So you where. just said you just said industrial agri agriculture ignores bioregions, which is a lovely sentence that is not in the book. Instead, it says industrial agriculture has ha has had significant impact on the environment affecting various um uh, yeah, just be really direct. Yeah. Um so, so then, then comes the regenerative movement. You know, here's what we here is the response to the industrialization, and why this is so important, and what it all brings: the economic opportunities, you know, uh, social justice, equity, cultural preservation, and so on. And then there's the path to a regenerative future. We're still you know, in an abstract way of thinking. Um, the role of large-scale multinational companies, how do they impact um, in an economy organized by bioregion, multinational companies can play both positive and challenging roles. You know, positive contributions, but environmental and social challenges. Um, so you know, how, how these companies ignore you know, bioregions and uh, prioritize short-term profits, exploit natural resources, compromise environmental and social standards mm -hmm. um and then we go into here there is there is such a thing as innovations brokerage you know, in supporting a community-based regenerative transition um and then what skills does it take to become an innovation broker um so right here before the spiral wizard right at the end after after the skills required for innovation brokerage right here just put some X's down right under regenerative transition or something like that. I would put it, I would move, uh, and Stuart, correct me if you would, would do something different. I would take that nice section you have at the end that is basically theory you applied to this. I would move it right here because it introduces the application of theory you for generative leadership and all that kind of stuff, which fits pretty nicely in the sequence of things you've been talking about here because you've been landing big ideas, innovation brokerage, bioregions, you know, et cetera, et cetera, boom, boom, boom it would be a, a nice sort of conclusion to the whole section. And it points directly to spiral dynamics, which you say, like, because of this, um, you know, I'm we're using spiral dynamics to do the communication. That's the next section. And then you're off to the races. Then you will still probably need a conclusion uh, uh, at the very, very, very end. You'll need something like the introduction to, to wrap things up and, and get, you know, get people comfy with, with leaving the book at the end. But I, I would move that chunk right here. Stuart? Yeah, I, I, I agree. And in terms of the conclusion, I would actually say something to the to the effect of, you know, um, here's what I've got, you know, I've gone through X, Y, and Z, the analysis of the current situation, a few different um, um, analytical models to think about as you're trying to influence others, um, you know, my hope and wish and prayer is that as a result of um, reading this paper, you choose to take some action and then perhaps list a bunch of things that people might do. Mm -hmm. And then a um, small second thing, a whole bunch of the things that ChatGPT has given you are numbered lists. Numbered lists make for terrible books. And this is just my impression in terms of formatting. So <laughs> what, what you will probably wind up doing, I think, is just, just removing the numbered indented lists and having communication and relationship building be the heading for, a, for a, a, a paragraph. And if you take out the numbered list, yeah, and then you bold the, the titles of each section, 
So uh, cultural sensitivity and empathy in bold, you know, the, what, what used to be the, the first phrase after the number, just bold each of those and they make, they, they turn into like little baby subsection headings. That is going to read much better through the whole document. Yeah. Class, I want to check on something, okay? How are you doing with this process? Yes. When you say process, do you mean the conversation right now? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, it's challenging in a way that um, uh, I have you know, sort of a flow in my head, and 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 you're messing with it. <laughs> yes. Yes, that's 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 just what I mean. Okay, you know how you doing with the process? How you doing with the feedback? How you doing with some of the details we're we're providing? Um, because you know, as 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 a, as a writer. There's a tendency to um, get committed to your words. Okay, uh -huh. we fall in love with our own words, with our own process, uh, and you know it takes a a certain mindset to actually uh, be okay with people fucking with your 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 words and your mindset. And I just want to make sure that that you know that you're okay. We get we get defend and we actually get defensive at times. Okay. So, yeah, no, no. I mean, I'm trying hard to not be defensive about this. I'm just, um, I'm just, you know, uh, shuffling this flow uh, together. First, it's so first all we're, yeah, all we're doing is making suggestions. Yes, you're the author. You're the ultimate arbiter of 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 you know how it all hangs together and 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 it says what you wanted to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So theory you hasn't come hasn't come in flowing into the conversation uh, until now, until I started getting into the uh, the end of it here, where bas basically, um, so so I'm saying, so we, we, we could put, so my, my first thought was it belongs here because now we're moving into solutions. So the first part that we have here, um, you know, before spiral dynamics came came about, hold on, this is probably faster to, um, where is it? Oh, here. So, so until here, you know, I'm basically describing scenarios, right? This this is an explanation of uh, um, the, the agricultural system is totally mucked up. There are historical examples of why this is a very dangerous thing to do, um, and uh, you know, the, the the changes required uh, would would uh, constitute a regeneration of uh, farmland, um, and uh, and so here is how regeneration works, uh, mostly uh, in 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 few of bioregions. So that's. And then, and then here's the skill sets that you would need, you know, to make that happen. So then I was coming into, let's talk about spiral dynamics here, the spiral wizard. And then I have an introduction, you know, ut utilizing spiral dynamics for practical and results oriented communications and systems change. So that's a tool set, you know, the, the, uh, uh, so, so the, how, how, you know, does this, how does this really work? So I put in, um I put in an introduction here, um, which we talked about you know, last time. Um you know, when you approaching communication from an advanced sustainable viewpoint, several core principles emerge, holistic understanding, flexibility, integration over alienation, contingency planning, transparency, data driven and experiential learning. And I can actually take the numbers out and highlight. Um so by adhering to these principles, we can tailor messages for practical applications. You know, so, so then we come engaging minds, changing menus. So I'm still focused on um, how do you communicate this stuff and, and uh, how do you, you know, interact with, with people who, um, who, who, who will take this uh, on an emotional level, right? Because, um, I mean, even within the Sierra Club, I mean, the, you know, the last meeting I had was just getting really contentious because you can't tell people what they should eat. Well, I'm not telling people what they should eat. I'm telling people about the consequences of what they eat, 
and let them make their own decisions, right? But they, they, you know, so so people are. This is really knee jerk, reactive stuff. Um, but then uh, coming back you now in uh, to to the crisis of the industrial food system, food as a cultural element, and so how do you engage the general public? Here's a spiral dynamics approach, um, and then it's the summation. Um, then there's food as a cultural element. How do you deal with this? Top down, bottom up approaches, mixed approaches, um, and then communicating insights in the course of actions. You know, communicating bottom up, top down, again, public and private partnerships, so social and moral appeal. Um, and then from there, I have this chapter talking in colors. So this is now a deep dive. What what does spiral dynamics actually have to say within the context of climate change, uh, within the context uh, uh, of, of a food system you know, to people who live, uh, who live uh, you know, in, in, in a communication or information bubble that is linked to the stage of, 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 uh, of uh, development they have. And this is where spiral dynamics you know, has these segmentations that are really you know, pretty, pretty common sense, uh, understandable. So, um, so this this is what a person living in red thinks about climate change, you know, about uh, uh, their their social environment, you know? and then out of this, uh, then comes the, the the okay. So we got all this now. And then there comes this next thing is, so what are, the, where, what are visions of the future? Where are we going? Um, and, and so the, the first you know, part of that is, it looks really pretty grim and take it serious. And then, then uh, I wanted to transition now, you know, to talk about um, what does this mean in practical terms? Right, so we got all this laid in. We have you know, all the the uh, influence factors and the negativity, and you know, here's how where people are positioned in the in the matrix of uh, of the society. Um, so where do you go with this? And then I go well, leading from the emerging future, um, because we have to. We don't really know where we need to go yet. I mean, we we sort of have a rough understanding, right? But it's way too broad to to have any level of specificity. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to reconsider my earlier suggestion to move this into the middle, partly be because you're convincing me of a couple of things. Um, one of them is that um, ending the book with spiral dynamics and a communication strategy seems like a weak ending. It's it it feels like you go in, in depth into it a lot, but it wasn't like it wasn't making me happy that that was like the whole thing. Where here you're saying, hey, how do we act into the future? And you're you're using it theory, you and a couple other things to sort of give some pragmatic advice. That that it actually works as as a, a good way to end. So I'm yeah. I'm I'm liking that that would happen. Uh, you know, if and, and I would uh, again, in, you know, explain theory you a little bit more, bring it in ex explicitly, uh, so that you can you can talk about it. But but as an application for as an application strategy or framework, I like it a lot. I got confused earlier when you had the introduction section up in the middle. It felt like there was a book inside the book. Um, that, dynamics, you mean? Uh, no, uh, let me go back and see if I can recover. Where communicating insights and no, uh, not that. Da, 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 da. Oh, was there a... Where'd it go? Here's another introduction under the spiral wizard. Yes, introduction is under the spiral wizard. Yes. Um, it, it felt like you were doing a book inside the book because there you have the crisis of the food system, soil depletion. I was like, wait, didn't we already do that earlier? So this, so this section, the crisis of the industrial food system and so forth, I, I was like, wait, this feels like territory we should have covered earlier in the intro of the setting of the problem. Uh, we did. We did. This is a repeat. 
Okay, and you have this it here. We emphasizing uh, the uh, soil depletion, water pool. We talked about this at length in the in the other sections. Okay, so maybe what you can say is why you're repeating it here and refer back. As we said earlier, soil depletion really matters, but we are but we need to emphasize it. We need to do something else to it. Because right now I'm feeling like you don't even remember that you wrote about soil depletion earlier and it's not connected, where if you want to bring these things up again, there's a way to refer to weave them into the text. Does that make sense? If but if But if what you're doing here is introducing spiral dynamics and trying to go straight to the communication strategies, then I'm not sure you need the crisis of the industrial food system and food as a cultural element here, unless they make a lot of sense for the thing you're trying to build right now. And 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 what you what it feels like you can do here is say, hey, we have some hooks here that are really popular. Like a lot of people are worried about water and soil, uh, and 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 then food is like this great common. Uh, common bond that that people have across the way. We're going to apply those three things, which we talked about earlier in more depth, uh, to a spiral dynamics approach for communication. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I thought I was saying that sort of thing here. Um, but we have so using spiral dynamics for practical and results oriented communications and social systems change. So we got that. Um, and, uh, actually I, I don't need any headline here. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, may just be confusing. Um, your format just changed to, yeah. Uh, just change that to normal text. Yeah. yeah. So. I think what might be useful is for you to take in this feedback, okay? Right now, I'd call the book, uh, it's a hot document. <laughs> There's a lot of emotion in it. And, um, you know, it's almost perfect that you're headed out on vacation. Leave it alone. Yeah. For three weeks. Just leave it alone. Don't even look at it. You know, maybe maybe make some of the changes that we talked about today, but then just leave it alone. Let it cool down. And then come back to it when you get back and and um have a sense now, a greater sense of clarity about what you wanted to do and how you wanted to do it. And then and then read what you've produced and see if it does it. <clears throat> does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, um, yeah, I didn't. I, I wasn't sure how far down the pipe I wanted to go with this, but I, I really like this theory you frame here because mm -hmm. um, I mean, when you think about the level of uncertainties, I, I have a meeting tomorrow here in Bend. Um, you know, I, I organized a panel discussion, the, the, the screening of the Kiss the Crown short version and then we have a panel discussion and it's packed i mean it's amazing that i got an article into the local paper uh you no know, the editor is there 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 is really starting to people starting to uh raise their heads and thinking wow there really is an issue with food that's a whole lot bigger than what we have looked at in the past now yeah it's a it's a big deal because you know as you as you as you say and allude to, there's all kinds of cultural aspects tied to it. And yeah. the then the transition, the mindset that people will, you know, will go through. It, it's like, you know, right now we think nothing of importing food sources to reflect the culture that 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 we come from. And yet, you know, some of that is um, um, it, it's killing the ecology. It's killing the ecology and it's time to. Uh, get used to eating from local food sources. And that being said, that's a good thing because that's some of the change that needs to that that needs to take place um, for all of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so the interesting part part is that when you think about theory you, um, you have 
you have, just like in spiral dynamics, people in different stages along the line, right? You have people who are who have barely encountered the iceberg model and, and, and barely have glimpsed underneath to see what's all involved here. You have others who are ready to prototype, but they don't necessarily have the consensus behind them to do what they want to do, right? Because there's just there's just not enough participation by enough people to make these things work. So the 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 essence of theory U is really to move people into a presencing stage where everybody agrees on here are the issues. Yeah, um, I was in a in a, a meeting this morning with a group that. Um, uh it's the farm action fund and uh you know then put in these policy recommendations and all of that um and uh they have completely missed in their recommendations the the need for agriculture to decentralize right because it's so centralized 40 percent of our fruits and vegetables come from california well you know, they can't do it anymore. So, so, so now we're importing, we are actually having a trade deficit in agricultural imports, if you can believe this. It's crazy, right? Hmm. But the general public doesn't get this yet. So, so to, to, and they haven't thought about yet with the implications of having to decentralize the food supply. And the, the, lead, the lead speaker in the meeting, when I post the question, he goes, yeah, honestly, we haven't really thought about this yet. <laughs> and so how can you find <laughs> solutions, you know, when when uh, when you are when you are not clear yet on what it is you need to solve? Yeah. Um, a couple things, because um, I have somebody else coming into this room at the top of the hour. Uh, so I will have to end on time, unfortunately. Um, a couple things. Klaus, I'm assuming you're not going to be on the calls for your vacation. So uh, right. we'll miss you for three weeks. Um, I think Stuart is right on where you can let this thing cool off a little bit, but also uh, as you're bored with or want to retreat into the room and start doing some work, this is a perfect thing to sit and, and sort of look at again and, and, and work on. So I, I think you'll you'll have some fun time with it while you're away. Yeah, but let it chill for a while. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Stuart, shall we meet uh, next Monday and go into your work and other stuff? And uh, like, like, shall we keep the Neo book calls going while... Klaus is away, or do you want to suspend them until Klaus is back? No, I'm good. I'm ready to dig in. I'm ready to to um to dig into to dig into my stuff. Sounds mm -hmm. great. Sounds great. And I, I will have stuff to bring in as well. Um, so when you come back, Klaus, we will probably have a couple different pies baking in the oven or something like that. Um, okay. that should work. I think it'll be fine. Um, any other thoughts before we before we shift modes and and so forth? I'm good. I well, mean, it's it's sort of uh, it's sort of flowing along. Mm -hmm. You've yeah. done a lot of work. It's great. It's 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 ac actually absolutely wonderful um, in terms of the stuff that you've included. And um, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you haven't set a bad precedent for me because. Um, I don't want to use chat DPT. That's just a preview, Jerry, for the conversation next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it goes. So, um, it goes. Mm -hmm. so Klaus, any other questions for us or thoughts? No, I'm good. I'm I'm going to play with this theory U stuff. I think that will make uh, that will make a nice continuation of this conversation here. Yeah. And and as as you make theory U more explicit here in this section, you might want to add a paragraph about theory U in your introduction. Um, because just like spiral dynamics, I'm I'm going to apply this other model called theory U, and here's why. And I think that'll that'll bind it together nicely. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And yeah, and I can guarantee you, as a result of, you know, um uh, uh all of us noodling, um the end product will be um, better. Oh, there's no question. Thank you, guys. I mean, we have already. Uh, no, no, you have been very helpful. Don't don't misunderstand what I'm saying. Good. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Very good. Thank cool. You. And I can only I can only share my own my own um, my own experience of sitting with you know 
four different marked up manuscripts and sitting there as the author going. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I say. You know, remember, you are the ultimate arbiter because uh, it's 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 your book. OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, but I do appreciate uh, the feedback. Cool. And actually defending it, you know, uh, brings it home clearer to myself. Ab absolutely. Great. As you as you get thoughts, send us email or use the Neo Books channel in Mattermost. Whatever you want, we'll you know we'll be on duty. <laughs> okay. Know, um, yeah, so my wife threatens uh, physical physical altercations if I keep working while we're on vacation. Mm. <laughs> we don't want to. We don't. We don't want to do that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We, we don't, we okay. will, yeah. Go, go okay. enjoy your family and enjoy the South, man. Yeah. Uh, have, yeah. A, have a have a wonderful time. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, see you next week. Okay. okay. Cool. Bye. Perfect. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Mm -hmm.